I get asked all the time, when do I need to invest in a dedicated tape machine for my shop? Well, the truth is, you can do a lot with a multi-process machine like the Rebel, but if you start to do more and more TIG welding and start to move into some specialized material like aluminum or magnesium, well, then you're going to want to have a dedicated TIG machine, something like the ESOB ET301 ACDC that we're gonna use right now. There's a lot of features in that machine that will improve your TIG welding ability, but there's just some basic rules that apply to any TIG machine. For every thousandth of an inch of material thickness, you'll need one amp to TIG weld it. So for a piece of steel that's 90 thousandths of an inch thick, you're gonna need right around 90 amps. You can set the machine a little hotter if it's equipped with a foot pedal because you control that amperage output. Clean, clean, clean. To properly prep a joint for TIG welding, it needs to be clean. That means no mill scale, no dirt, paint, or surface rust. That is why it takes more time to produce a good quality TIG weld. If you dip the tungsten, you've got to stop and resharpen it. You can't work with a contaminated tungsten. If you're just learning, sharpen a few pieces of tungsten so you can easily swap them out when you need to and that'll just keep your productivity up. Get comfortable. TIG welding is a time consuming process, so being comfortable in your work area is important. And also practice uncomfortable angles. Don't just keep welding the same T-joint over and over again. Set up some practice pieces in a weird position so you have to work to get a good quality weld. Another important skill to master is moving the filler metal inside your hand. You have to remember, as you're welding, this hand is getting closer and closer to the arc. You can't just stop welding and then reposition your hand. You have to be able to move the filler rod down your hand while you're welding. So if you're ever just sitting around the house not doing anything, grab a piece of filler and just practice moving it through your hand. You can try different hand positions. You can try your off hand in case you ever need to weld into a weird angle. It's just a good skill to keep practicing just like welding. But believe it or not, practice will get you so far. Stepping up to a dedicated TIG machine like the 301 I ACDC that we're using today actually has some features that can improve your welding as well. High frequency start. High frequency start is the ability for the arc to jump across the air gap from the tungsten to the workpiece to start the weld. A pulse feature allows you to control the on time of the arc at a specific amperage. It also allows you to control the background voltage. This will limit the heat input into the workpiece and is very handy if you're welding material of different thicknesses together. Frequency adjustment comes into play when you're welding aluminum. Before the onset of inverter technology, you were limited to 60 cycles per second of frequency adjustment. But with an inverter machine, you can adjust the frequency as high as 200 hertz. That tightens up the arc at the end of the tungsten and provides more cleaning while welding and produces a tighter arc cone with more directional control. The foot pedal will control the amperage and is commonplace for most TIG machines. It has a very important job. It's not just an on-off switch. It gives you total control over the welder's amperage output and it'll give you full control over the molten puddle while you weld. Adding a water-cooled torch to any machine will help you work for longer periods of time because it'll keep the torch in your hand cool.